Welcome to the WEN show, ladies and gentlemen. Hey. It's pre-recorded this week because yeah. we have no idea what's going on. <laughs> Not a clue. <laughs> We're having a tremendous afternoon. You know, the craziest thing about today oh. is that we actually pressed go for the first time on time. Oh, yeah. And I don't remember the last time that happened. It's been a while. And then after 35 minutes of trying different <laughs> restreaming services, swapping Ethernet cables, changing encoding settings, uh, we just we we can't we can't push any more notifications to YouTube because YouTube won't deliver them to you, and um, we just we have no choice. We have no choice. There's nothing that we can do. Oh my goodness! Please tell me that this isn't live. Uh, okay, I'm just, yep, cool. I'm just gonna set these unlisted, and I'm just gonna call them Broken Stream. <laughs> broken Streams, Broken Dreams. They're oh, perfect. All of them. Best title. Best title. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. Viral hit. Yeah, oh yeah. Um, this is in the new cat video. Yeah, there's just, there's nothing I can do about this at this point. No, other we, than we do have, uh, for when you guys do see oh, this. Oh good, oh good, the last one just went published, went public on the channel. Brilliant, I love it. Thank you, thank you YouTube. Appreciate this, don't know what's going wrong. Uh, it's great because the YouTube diagnostic was green. Oh yeah, it's like everything's fine. Stream health was green. Oh don't OBS, worry about it. OBS, all green, everything yep. green. Yep, um, no problems here. Yep. So great. So we just used up one, two, three, I think four YouTube notifications, which I believe is Heck our daily yeah. limit. Nice. Um, so when show basically won't get viewed this week because algorithmic view serving rather than just pinging people when we ask. When things get Although maybe they're saving us from ourselves today because we just notified that might people have been four good. times in 15 minutes. Yeah. Anyway, we've got a great show for you guys today. A lot of good stuff. Um, My phone only got one. Your phone it, only it, got one? If it helps, yeah. Well, hopefully. Um, uh, Should we restart this? <laughs> no. No, I was, uh, no. We we're got just, this. We we, got we, this. We've already restarted like four or five times, yeah. so whatever. So we're going to... The first big topic of today is, yeah. of course, Apple bailing, reportedly on the butterfly keyboard that they've been using in their MacBook Pros. So finally. finally, so the original article here is from MacRumors.com. We're gonna go ahead and fire that up. There you go. Apple to use new scissor switch keyboard in future MacBooks starting with the 2019 MacBook Air refresh. Wow, that could actually make the 2019 MacBook Air like the notebook to buy, assuming that they managed to put a quad-core processor in it this time. Yeah. I'd be pretty stoked on that. That goes against our notes in the dock, which is interesting, because it said the keyboard will likely not be ready for this year's lineup and will be used in the MacBook Pro, but not until 2020. Fascinating. But they're rumors, so brr, either way, sounds like hopefully Apple is moving away from the uh, butterfly keyboard. Yeah, my, your mileage your mileage may vary on these uh, on these rumors, of course. Yeah. So uh, the the again the rumor is that the new scissor switch can improve the typing experience by offering a longer key travel. What? No. <laughs> no! What? Nobody was asking. You know what it's I not wonder? How keyboards work. You know what I really wonder? Was Apple trying to pave the way for a haptic screen switch? I could see it, judging by a lot of the stuff they've been developing. Yeah, didn't yeah. they kind of feel? Yeah. Like, like kind of like a sharp, short, almost like. Uh, like a force touch feel. Yeah, yeah. And their force touch is actually very good. It's amazing. Yeah. Or 3D touch or whatever the whatever, difference is between yeah. those two. Is that even that crazy? Like when you look at the way the average person. No, I would person, believe that. Like the average person doesn't touch type even. So if you're just Joe average and they, they went and they put the, they put and the, they uh, the touch down. bar in, they went and they put these switches that are sort of, I mean, they're in between Lots of travel and no travel whatsoever. Am I boring you? <laughs> Sorry. No, 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 it's okay. I know, I know you're just tired. Yeah. Um, anyway, sorry, that's neither here nor there. So anyway, the new scissor switch can improve typing experience by offering a longer key travel. Cheaper to make, but won't be as cheap as an average keyboard. Apparently the butterfly does have the advantage of being very thin, which of course nobody was really... <sighs> 
asking for. Yeah, I, I don't think that's been, I, I the, the whole design industry has been so obsessed with making phones and laptops thinner. And like it really doesn't matter past a certain point. They've been as thin as I've needed them to be for a few years now. Yeah, like thing, things were yeah. too clunky. We had there, there's pictures you can find of laptops that are like clearly too thick, but yeah, I don't know. At a certain point, it doesn't matter so much anymore. When you can fit it in a file folder, with like ease, it's like yeah, okay, yeah, it's probably good enough. Um, oh man, uh, YouTube chat is still going. This is so simple. It's their damn net. Why is this so hard to understand? They have a switcher router down or their upstream is getting hosed. So while we were dropping frames, we measured, what was it, 600 megabit up or something stupid like that off of the streaming computer. So no, no, nope. that weren't it, Not unfortunately. That. Not that. <laughs> Yeah, I, I genuinely have no clue what two, this could possibly be. Two millisecond be. pings and 600 megabit up uh, while we were still streaming. So, nope, that's fine. Like, we're, yeah. we're actually pretty stumped. <laughs> usually, usually, like, a diagnostic process yeah. could just be do everything over again and then it'll maybe work. And you won't necessarily know what was yeah. broken, but it'll maybe work. But we've done that, like, yep. quite a few times. And we also don't have time to do that right now when no. the show is supposed to be going live yeah. right now. So we appreciate yeah. your suggestions, but unfortunately, they weren't really applicable this time. No. I kind of want to just ditch this computer again, because I think it's haunted. That's the only possible explanation at this point in time, is that that computer is haunted. I made a joke uh, last week, I think it was. Yeah. Which is where like I should just bring my computer in every Friday. We just stream off of that. But like at this point, I bet you would work. <laughs> the crazy thing, again, like I, I, like I was, I was afraid to, like I didn't want to blame it on the network. I could blame it on the network cable that was running around the yeah. office because we're talking 20 meters, another 40, another 20, like you're getting kind of close. And we're going through a switch, although that theoretically should reset the 100 meter limit sort of ish, I yeah. think. Anyway, it's, it's not an amazing, to. it's not an amazing switch. And I was having an issue with an ethernet uh, port in the set earlier this week. Okay. So I was like, okay, maybe there's a bad switch. So we ran a cable directly to the server room, which is not into a bad switch. Um, that's into like a four thousand dollar switch. It's a little bit of a like sketchy that. cable. It's not a great cable. But it looks like it's working just fine. Yeah, and we had the exact same issue either way. So yeah. and I didn't want to blame the network because the stream cart streams fine. But that, yeah, that's yeah. why I've been saying to this computer has yeah, been a problem. I've been mentioning the stream cart streaming fine for a yes. while now. So, but then <sighs> the, the, dire the direct connection that didn't fix it. So. <laughs> It's haunted. It's, it's haunted hardware. That's the only possible explanation for it. But it's been haunted for like six years. Speaking of haunted, uh, in other news this week, oh. three Florida towns are apparently infected by ransomware. So uh, this was posted originally on ArsTechnica.com. Let's go ahead and uh, pull the article up here. Florida LAN. Someone clicks link again, giving Key Biscayne? Biscayne? I, I don't know. Key Biscayne? Ransomware. Triple threat, triple threat commodity malware attack seizes computers of yet another Florida town. This is like ransomware is honestly the smartest thing the black hat community ever came up with because compared to other attacks, it is so easy to deploy and is so profitable. Like it is so lucrative. I mean, compared to, you know, if you were, let's say hypothetically, you were to deploy something like uh, a medium sized botnet, okay? In order to deploy that, it's relatively straightforward. You have to get someone to click on a compromised link. Um, approve running a compromised executable or some kind of script on a web page or something like that. And basically, for all intents and purposes, they are a part of your swarm, right? Sure. Does it go about like that? Sure. All right. So then from there, monetizing the swarm is the next step because just infecting people's computers, unless you just want to watch the world burn, doesn't have a, 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 a nickels and dimes benefit. Yeah. So, okay, ways to monetize a swarm. You might mine cryptocurrency on your swarm. But you'll probably have to do it in relatively low amounts. 
because you'd have to mine fairly slowly because you don't want people to reformat the computers or go get them fixed or whatever. Or whatever the case may be. You, so, so really the key to a good infection is the user not knowing that they are infected. So mining cryptocurrency is In an that, option. So if you want to bot it, yeah. You could, um, you could fraudulently, you could uh, fraudulently click on uh, banner ads or uh, you know YouTube advertising or whatever else. So, so you could, you could uh, conduct like a click fraud operation. You could um, farm keystrokes. Farm keystrokes. Okay. Yeah. Right. You could sell data. All right. So you could find these individuals that have. So you, you could uh, keylog them. So you could find when they've uh, logged into something. You could go. Okay. Let's let's go try that and just kind of. Uh, I'm sure there's an AI that you could use to kind of. Try yeah. You to just identify log keyboard. like. Okay. They're on this page. Yep. And they entered these two things into these fields. Yeah. Sounds good. There you go. So you can you could. Start. You could farm user data, and then from there you could commit identity theft, or there's a you know variety of other things. You could just get straight into people's bank accounts, transfer funds out of them. So that can be pretty lucrative. But you've got it. The point is that once a computer is infected, you have to come up with something. But uh, yeah, also in that category, you have to transfer yeah. funds out of those bank accounts to another bank account, all in like whatever. I don't remember what the term for it is, but like fiat currency. Fiat currency. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that's a little bit tough because it's quite traceable. Ransomware, by contrast, is just brilliant because- You're getting people to pay you directly. You only have to get, theoretically, as few as one computer infected with it. It's just as easy to roll out as something like a keylogger. Uh, if you, basically, if you can get anyone to run an executable and click through the prompts on their computer, I mean, that, that's it. You, know, you can talk all day, Mac, PC, uh, you know, Chrome, Firefox, it doesn't matter. Once you get someone to execute a file and then blitz through the security prompts on their computer, which most users will just do without looking at them, yeah. they're infected. And an individual could pay hundreds of dollars to unlock their computer because at least with you know, one of those other types of infections, you can, you can cut off the problem at the source by just unplugging it from the internet or formatting the PC or whatever. Like it's something that can relatively easily be fixed with ransomware, at least with the more sophisticated ones, um, you just don't have your data. And yeah, you can reformat your computer, but say goodbye to all your childhood photos or whatever else it is that you store on your computer. So an average person would probably pay two, 300 bucks to get that stuff back. Yeah. Well, okay, not probably. There's, there's a very high percentage chance yeah. that an average person might be interested or there might be things on that computer that are worth two to three hundred bucks to them. So they're, it's, a, it's a decent amount to try to charge a random. But if you know that you happened to get like uh, a municipality or a city or a, a bank or like some big entity like that, you can charge potentially way more. Apparently, um, first town Palm Beach County, yeah. no idea, $600,000 is to be paid. And oh, second that was town, paid. Oh, oh, Lake City, Florida is also going to be paying about 42 Bitcoin, which is about 460,000 USD uh, whenever this was written because yeah. that price changes all the time. But 42 Bitcoin. And Crazy. then the third town, uh, Key Biscayne, got no notice about ransom. Uh, most of their networks apparently got back up within four days after being infected, but all of them were hit by the same method, a city employee clicking on a malicious email. <sighs> yikes. That's pretty rough. Big yikes. Um... In other news, Vodafone UK switches on 5G service with unlimited data plans. So the original article here was from the BBC. Let's go ahead and fire that up. It's live in five shopping cities in the U UK. Video. Boom. Switches on in seven UK cities. So in spite of all the concerns that people have about the safety of 5G, um, not just with respect to like, the, the 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 RF, you know, like effects on their body or whatever else. Like, what are you what are you looking at? Oh, I was I was looking at my wrist. Oh oh yeah. I, sorry, I thought I was I was. Have you been exposed to five G? Yeah, sir? I know. Fi <laughs> are you okay? I've got the five G rash. Are you healthy? Um. So Stay away uh, no, from me. yeah, I forgot. So I was hydro dipping. 
Oh, cool. So I just, no, it's just paint on my arm. Yeah. So sorry, I had a bit of a panic moment there. So anyway, the concerns about 5G are not just with respect to the effects of the, the waves on the human body. Um, yeah, it's taking down weather satellites and that's like, the other oh, one. crazy stuff. So it apparently interferes with uh, weather forecasting, or at least could interfere with weather forecasting. Not so. that it's accurate anyways. All right. <laughs> well, yeah, but like... I'm yeah. talking more than just like 70% <laughs> chance of rain or whatever. Uh, yeah, I'm know, talking I know, I know. like yeah. hurricane warnings apparently could be yeah. affected by this. So it's a very serious issue, Luke, and I think you should just grow up a little bit. Okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The weatherman said I would have more snow this year, and I didn't. It's some upset. It's weather predictor, weather correspondent, not weatherman. Oh. Okay. What year is it? Ugh. I think you need to not just grow up, but also get with the times. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Okay. In other news, did did you? <laughs> What's up, train? train. <laughs> we have a door. Oh. Okay. Uh, we do. Yeah, like it's broken. Like pressure, no, it's like a pressure situation. Oh. Okay. Okay. Um, in other in other news, did you see the dumbest thing on the internet of all time? Actually, Nick, I'll let you jump in before I get into this. I haven't watched your most uh, recent video yet. Still wanted to do that thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I already sent you the thing. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do All it during right. the sponsor spots. Cool. Um, this is the best show. Okay. <laughs> have you? It's the, the greatest. <laughs> the greatest. It's the most amazing show. Um, so this was trending on Twitter last night, and I don't usually weigh in on political discussion on the WAN show, but this, oh boy. this just made, this just, it, man, it made me so mad it could turn my hair red. And that's a joke to okay. do with anyway. So there, there was a trending hashtag what over the, the last joke couple of with? days. Hashtag not my Ariel. Because a dark-skinned actress has been cast to play Ariel in the live-action Little Mermaid movie. Okay. And I just couldn't even. <laughs> I just couldn't even. I see why that's a joke now. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, red hair. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. basically... White people were mad that Ariel is not white. I don't, yeah, I don't get it, really. I, I don't just, know why anyone cares. So the argument's getting made, and this is, this is why I wanted to bring this up. This is, this is the part of the show that's just sort of off topic now. So the argument that was getting made was that it's not true to the original, uh, like the original content. And that's kind of where I was going with this. It's just a, it's a news flash for everyone, uh, racist or otherwise. The Disney movie is rarely, if ever, yeah. the original source material. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're usually based on like fairy tales, which came way Cinder before. Then. Cinderella, a lot older than 1950 or 60, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> You know yeah. the uh, uh, yeah. uh, Sleeping Beauty. Because yeah. there's like there's Hun hundreds of years. There's old. interesting ones where you know the Harry Potter and the and the what is it, Cursed Child or something? Yeah, I haven't read that. Oh, uh, I, uh, don't bother, hey? Yeah, probably not. Bummer. I All went right. to go see the play. Yeah, was that any good? Which was actually the production was amazing. Oh, the playhouse that it was in was fantastic. Um, I think the the actors did a very good job and like yeah. the how they used the production house and the effects yeah. and everything were great, etc. But I was actually a little confused when it first started. I didn't recognize Hermione because she's not white. Right. I didn't get that. Once someone refers to her as Hermione, I'm like, oh, okay, and right. then proceeded to not care. Figured out the internet cared a lot. Um, and but something that got brought up is yeah. Apparently, uh, J.K. Rowling yeah. has said that she was never intended to be white. Really? And that she was actually supposed to be African. Sure. Of, so, of for whatever reason. More equatorial, that continent descent. I, I, sure. I can't keep up with I don't what know the terms what's are. The yeah. Um, <laughs> so but, I, give, I give up. And I'm like, and I read yeah. that and went, okay, and moved on. Internet. Not okay with this. Internet, Apparently, okay. in one of the books, it specifies that she is white. So when you told me the Ariel thing, that's why my reaction was like, because uh, now I'm wondering, it's like maybe in one of the fairy tales, to the doth it be you? Yeah, your face uh, happens to be pearlescent. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I have no idea. But like, <laughs> maybe so, I don't know. 
Anyway, the long and the short of it is, I'm never clicking on a trending hashtag again. Because they I'm, never matter. <laughs> and, and I'm sorry that I ever did, because Twitter is the ultimate illustration of everything that is wrong with the mainstream internet. Twitter gives everyone a voice, and quite frankly, not everyone deserves one. The thing that just drives me nuts is like, that's actually the least important thing I've heard of in so long. <laughs> it's like the skin color of the character who plays Ariel. It's yeah, like, wow. I mean, can we address the bigger issue here? That the live action remakes of the old Disney classic cartoons are the most blatant just, garbage cash yes, grab yes. of our time? Yes. Like, they are worse than gaming movies. I'm actually gonna take that stance. Really? Defend it. Okay, have you seen, um, have you seen Hitman? No, actually. It's actually... <laughs> okay. It's, it's, it's okay. Yeah, okay. I get really triggered about the Warcraft movie because yeah. the amount of inaccuracies and like, why the heck is it live action? Yeah, like the orcs. The orcs were never intended to be green. <laughs> 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 they were red. Uh, it, <laughs> there's some that are. Anyways, uh, the the Warcraft movie it drives me nuts because Blizzard is insanely good at making yes. animated cinematics and like yes. they always have been. Yeah. And then there's a live action movie and everyone's like, w what? Because what they're were you thinking? They, Play to your strengths, ladies and gentlemen. And please. they like change part of the story and yeah. all this kind of stuff. But if you went in there never knowing anything about Warcraft, it's actually probably pretty decent. Like there's some gaming movies I think a are... lot of people are going to take issue with that in the comments, but please go on. Why? I just think they will. I haven't seen the movie. You told me not to watch it, so I never oh, watched it. Oh, I wouldn't it. bother. Exactly. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, but like I I think gaming movies are at the very least getting better. And like Hitman I thought was it was okay for a plane movie. I didn't Got feel it. like I wasted my time. Got it. Okay. So, and I feel like every live action Disney movie is going to be a waste of time. So here is, I guess, you know what? I, I, I've challenged you to defend that, but I actually don't disagree with you. Because okay. to me, I, what I'm glad you brought up was whether it was a waste of time or not. Yeah. So my, that is exactly my issue with the Disney live action remakes. So I only watched part of... Uh, Beauty and the Beast. Not because I wasn't in the room the whole time, but because my attention was super not focused on it because it was very, very boring. So at least- This is the live action version. Yeah, at okay. least with most video game movies that I've seen, they at least try to put a spin on the story and or the characters, or just use the original story and characters of the, the, the game as a, as a jumping off point and do something completely different as with it. As long as it's not made by, I don't remember how to say his first name, but you will. Bowl? Yeah. yeah. I like yeah. I don't I can't think of a video game movie that tries to just steal the plot of one of the games but just make it a movie. Do you remember the old Final Fantasy movie? That was yeah, it was nothing like no, any of the not even close. any of the games. But it's good. In fact, I would have made the argument that that just shouldn't have been called Final Fantasy anything because it was just completely off topic. I would agree. Yeah. But it's good. <laughs> but it's still it's okay. But going back to the Disney live action movies, they just they're, it's it's in some cases it's even the same bloody songs, like they didn't even they didn't they didn't they didn't do anything original, like okay it's 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 reimagined. Seems like they throw expensive actors at it. Oh yeah, because they know they're gonna make a billion dollars. And they know the names of the actors will help them make exactly. ludicrous amounts of money. So, so, so this is a, it's a, it's, and that's my problem with it is like, I feel like my time is being wasted because I'm being told the yes. exact same story yeah. in the exact same way with the exact same songs. And I'm somehow supposed to get over the fact that Hermione Granger is Belle for whatever reason <laughs> and French, I guess. And I just can't, I, I, I just, I, I don't get it. And so to me, it just looks like it's entirely a bean counter decision. Yeah. So someone went, okay, we can do a remastering of The Lion King, now on Blu-ray in 3D with some, uh, some DVD extras and behind the scenes, and we can do a big campaign, we can do a theatrical release, and we can print ourselves $150 million or X whatever. years later interviews. Or we can do this, we can spend twice as much, we can spend $300 million, but we know we're gonna get 
900 million, one and a half billion. Like we know what the return is because we can just take it almost as a straight up formula. We just go, okay, here's the year of the original release. Here's what it grossed. Here's what the overall like, because they've got, I'm sure they have figures for all this. Here's what the overall merchandising numbers were like. So here's how many adult humans today with children exist that oh. loved this movie. Yeah. And they can just draw a freaking trend line through it <laughs> and go, okay, yeah. Cool. So yeah. that one's worth about 1.15 billion uh, if we put the Disney machine to work and pump out all this stuff around it. That's gonna cost us about 350 million. So we could either spend, you know, 5 million redoing the same movie or 10 million or whatever, adding 3D um, and get our 150 million. Or we could take a bigger risk, but it's not a risk. No. And we could generate a much bigger return. Let's work on that instead. So that's why we saw one of these things. And now there's an explosion. Tons of them. Cause they're like, oh yeah, it worked for sure. Let's just do it again. And I was never that into Beauty and the Beast, so I, it didn't offend me, even if I didn't particularly enjoy the live action thing. Like, I was just bored because it was like, this is the same movie. Yeah. But now, instead of the. Because I, I love animated movies. I was going to say, some things are better animated. Some things are better animated. Some things lend themselves like to Warcraft. imagination better when they're animated. How to Train Your Dragon wouldn't be as good a no. film if it wasn't animated. No. Um, neither would The Incredibles. No. And, no. And so I just, I, I wasn't like offended, but I actually just found out apparently they're working on live action Mulan and that kind of annoyed me. Because, and we had, we had a big debate in the office today about which is, a better, which is a better Disney film, Mulan or Hercules. Do you want to weigh in on that? Did you ever see either of them? Ooh, okay. It's been a wild amount of time since I've seen either, and an exceptionally wild amount of time since I've seen Mulan. But probably Mulan? I mean, there's no right answer. I mean, no one would agree with you if you said Hercules other than David. Okay. Yeah, but like, anyway, but the like point it's is, been, yeah, it's been a very long. Time. I, I only just found out they're doing a live action one of that, and I'm just like, what? What are you gonna like? What were you aiming to fix? And if you weren't aiming to fix anything, because that was it's not even that old of a now. movie. It's like 1996 or 98 or something. I guess that was a while ago. It's pretty old. It's pretty old. <laughs> oh. It's like over 20 years old. <laughs> Was I really 10? <laughs> it's, it's quite a while ago. <laughs> Hold on a second. Oh, man. 98. Yeah, it's 21 years ago. <laughs> Darn it. Darn it. All right. So, sorry when you guys actually watch this live. We haven't had a live chat to uh, keep us on track. Yeah, so. sorry guys, we uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll get back on track with our sponsors. The show today is brought to you by Private Internet Access. Go to lmg.gg slash PIAWAN to try it out today. PIA has over 3,000 bare metal servers in 44 locations across 28 countries. You can connect up to five devices at the same time with a single account. Their apps include DNS leak protection and IPv6 leak protection. They've got apps for Windows, Mac OS, Android, iOS, Linux, and Google Chrome. And, I mean, what else do you need? Go check it out. It's PIA. It's freaking awesome. It's sweet. Speaking of awesome, Corsair's Hydro X is bringing full custom liquid cooling to the masses. Corsair, their XC7 and XC9 RGB CPU blocks are among the top performers out there with their skived, skived, skived with their skived microfin cold plates. Um, and really the main story here to me is the way that Corsair handles an entire ecosystem of products. So they're all designed to work together properly and they went all out. So some of the products were designed by Corsair in-house, including the CPU blocks, as well as the reservoir pump uh, arrangement. Although you'll be happy to hear this. They didn't go stupid on the pump. They went with a genuine Lang D5. Cool, okay. Right? That's actually very nice. And like they had the stones to just go with what people should buy instead of offering things that people shouldn't buy because they might want them. I, I will say as someone who has had no involvement in this whatsoever, the fact that they just went with a D5 makes me very happy. Yep. <laughs> so that's uh, for the, really good. For the radiators, they had Hardware Labs do them up. Cool. For the fittings, who do you think? Just guess. It was a good choice. 
It was a good choice. It was okay, a good choice. Okay, so I've got two in mind. One of them is Bits Power. Yep, there you go. It was Bits Power. They went with Bits Power for the <laughs> fittings. So they designed the things themselves where it made cool. sense. Uh, GPU blocks as well. Um, and they went with partnerships where they felt like there was outside expertise that could help them deliver a better product. So go check it out. Um, it all works together great. And you can use their configurator over at lmg.gg slash hydroX and it'll help you pick all the right stuff and put it all together. The show is also brought to you by Pulseway. Pulseway is the real-time remote monitoring and management software that helps you fix problems on the go by sending commands from any mobile device. It's compatible with Windows, Mac, and Linux, and their single app gives you remote desktop functionality so you can get access to real-time status, system resources, logged in users, network performance, Windows updates, and more. It even allows, allows you to create and deploy custom scripts to automate your IT tasks. So try it out for free at pulseway.com or through the link in the video description. Uh, the last thing I wanted to bring up was actually something that we talked about on one of our previous attempts to do this stream. Um, but promo code 10 off 30 on lttstore.com. So if you go to lttstore.com slash discount slash 10 off 30, it's limited to 500 orders and it ends in oh, two hours actually, uh, as of us recording this. So 8 p.m. Pacific. Uh, it'll give you $10 off orders of $30 or more. So go check that out right away. It is limited kind in both ridiculous. quantity and time. Um, all right. So what else do we have for the show today? It's actually a nuts deal. We got a little bit off topic there. <laughs> just a little bit. How did we get there? We're talking about keyboard switches? Uh, I don't know. I just, <laughs> I got super mad because, like, honestly, it consumed a lot of my time because I just, it was one of those things where I couldn't look away from the stupid. <laughs> and I was just... Oh, right, the, the Twitter topic. Yeah, I was, yeah. like, just scrolling my phone like a zombie until I finally went, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Enough internet for today. <laughs> but I think, I think that's the whole... Oh, man, we got to not get caught on this even longer. But I think that's the whole problem with those types of issues and why they start trending. Because you're like, oh, goodness. And then people weigh in after feeling that. Right. Instead of just scrolling forever like you did, they'll weigh in and then scroll forever. And then wait or for people both. to reply to them, and then they'll reply and to then those reply people. Back. And then it just and then it's, and this whole thing that should have never mattered at all yes. is now trending on Twitter. It's now trending on Twitter. Yeah. It's madness. Fantastic. Uh, speaking of madness, Trump is apparently to lift <laughs> some restrictions on Huawei. The original article here is from Engadget.com. Let's go ahead and pull that up. He Lift verbally stated that U.S. companies can sell their equipment to Huawei during a G20 summit in Japan. Not clear which companies are allowed to do business in Huawei. Not clear exactly what hardware either because he said uh, they can sell hardware that doesn't have a great national emergency problem uh, and they're still on the commerce department's entities list which is like a big issue if you want to sell anything to them but he's verbally said that you can so I don't think anyone knows what this really means uh, Huawei has apparently scaled back phone production since the ban was announced due to the loss of official Android support and other partnerships. Um, and as much as I'd love to say that this means everyone can go back to business as usual, um, that is often not the case when it comes to random off-the-cuff statements yeah. uh, from this particular um, leader of the free world. So we just thought we'd say, hey, something was said might happen. It but might mean something. Don't know stuff. <laughs> uh, NVIDIA's super graphics cards are out and the word on the street, uh, this is according to videocards.com, is that in response to NVIDIA's super launch of the uh, RTX 2060 Super, RTX 2070 Super, and RTX 2080 Super, AMD is going to lower pricing of their Radeon RX 5700 series ahead of the launch. So they had already announced pricing, if I recall correctly. Uh, yes, they did for their new Navi series. And I don't believe they have announced what the new pricing will be. So right now it's a bit of a mystery. And uh, they're, really, uh, they're really cutting it close to the wire here, aren't they? Because yeah. the launch is in two days, two days. <laughs> and incidentally, that two days time frame happens to land us on a Sunday, 
which means that all of their partners, like, you know, stores where people might buy these graphics cards, um, might not have their business administration staff in the office. Um, and I guess this opens up into a pretty sort of, um, uh, not a rant, but into a grievance that I guess I, this is an opportunity for me to air. Um, AMD needs to stop launching their products on weekends. Today we received not what, yeah, you know what? I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, everyone knows what's launching and when it's launching. Today we received not one, but two last minute updates that affect both of the launches. And for that reason, we have multiple people on staff here that are being forced to come in on the weekend in order to get our videos done on time. It's not right, it's not fair, and it's completely unnecessary. There's a reason why a huge amount of industries release things on Tuesdays. You dodge holidays in a huge amount of countries that you might not have planned for on purpose because they, one country might have a Monday off for whatever reason. Yep. So you're, you're fine in terms of long weekends uh, and you have a big part of the week ahead of you to fix things within standard hours for the whole industry, whether it's the person selling your product to end users, whether it's your side offering support, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you have the meat of the week ahead of you and you don't have problems with long weekends. So instead, um, AMD and their board partners have probably been scrambling last minute to get uh, you know some POS rebates or other kinds of support issued to their, their reseller partners um, in order to make sure that their pricing is competitive. Um, and so yeah, it's just it's one of those things that it, I wouldn't even mind if it wasn't so unnecessary. AMD could have easily launched this on a different day of the week. Um, a few days was not going to affect the overall impact of, of this launch, you know, if their advertised performance claims are anything to go by. Um, it's just rude. I just don't get the point. And what benefit is there? And the thing too is like AMD might have thought, well, we're gonna be ready well enough ahead of time that it's not gonna be a problem, but they should really just know themselves a little better at this point. This is the second time they've dropped a driver update on us on a Friday before a weekend launch in three launches. So like, guys, know your own limitations. You are never ready on time. So with that in mind, plan to not be ready on time and to be sending out last minute stupid emails about everything that's changed uh, the night before and so that there's some kind of a contingency for all the people that are reliant on you keeping to your word and keeping to your schedule. Or at the very least, not keeping to your word and not keeping to your schedule, but at least having some kind of plan. <laughs> so it's really, really frustrating. Um, Speaking of which, apparently the re-recordings that I need to do for one of those videos is ready, so I might just have to, uh, I might just have to cut this WAN show a little bit short so I can get that, get that done here. Is there anything else that you had really wanted to talk about today? Uh, the Amazon thing is not that interesting. We can, we can run through it real quick if you want. We can do it really fast, sure. Uh, there's a question. Should Amazon be held liable for third-party uh, third seller of products? Uh, the U.S. Appeals Court ruled that Amazon can be held accountable for faulty third-party sales. Third-party sellers selling either defective or dangerous products items uh, includes items not directly sold or fulfilled by Amazon. There's a lot of sellers on Amazon. Um, I actually kind of wish there wasn't, or I wish it was yeah. a little bit more obvious because it's yeah. not that apparent that they you're do, buying from some random. Yeah, yeah. They do they do communicate it. Yeah, but it's not kind of blasted to you. Yeah, and it's really annoying when it happens um, because a big part of the reason why at least I shop on Amazon is because I know I'm dealing with Amazon. Yeah, and I'm actually not that interested in shopping on Amazon to deal with other groups. If I wanted to shop on some random website with products that might be sketchy or crappy, I would go to a website that specializes in 
products that you know might not have been imported correctly or might not adhere to the same safety standards yeah. that um, you know someone like Amazon would have to make sure that they are. So apparently, nearly half the items sold on Amazon are through third-party sellers. Wow, I actually had no idea. I had no clue either. That's, That's kind of wild. Crazy. I wonder if that means half the listings. Yeah, I have no idea. Not the actual volume. I bet you it's listings, not volume. Yeah, because the volume would have to be... In order for it to be half of the items, like half of the packages yeah. sent, like the vast majority of listings would have to be non-Amazon listings because I'm sure Amazon watches for anything with high volume in stocks. Yeah, in. yeah, Amazon Basic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now we have our own version, haha. <laughs> Amazon Basics, d d butt plug. Like, <laughs> give it time. The way I was gonna say, one day. <laughs> There's been no comment by Amazon yet. Um, so the, the origin of the case was apparently uh, a gal by the name of Heather Oberdorf who sued the company in federal court back in 2016 when a retractable dog leash snapped and whipped back at her, causing permanent loss of vision in her left eye. Whoa. So the lower court will rule on whether the leash itself was defective, but that's where this whole debate seems to have come from. Right. So that's it for the WAN show that's this it, week. Um, oh, we do have a blog post from you guys over at ltxexpo.com. This is coming up so soon. 22 days. Woo. We've got a BYOC update. Here is the seed selection, dreamhack.com slash ticket slash LTX19. So if you haven't chosen your seat yet, now is the time. Registration updates. When you arrive at the Vancouver Convention Center, please visit the registration desks located in the lobby area first. This is where we will scan your ticket and give you a wristband that is specific to your ticket type. Um, make sure you keep your wristband on for the whole weekend, by the way, if you have a multi-day ticket. We don't have replacements, straight up. Uh, these are the registration hours. And note that registration is open a day early and early on Saturday if you wanna come in and pick up your wristband ahead of time. Highly recommend if you have a BYOC ticket. Do it. If you haven't bought your ticket yet, go to dh.je slash ltx19 to check it out. And here's the map. Woo, see you soon. Super cool, I'm so excited. All right, so that's it for the WAN Show this week. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you again next time. Same bad time, same bad channel, hopefully without any streaming issues. <laughs> you should make a video of just, like, redoing it. Fixing the WAN. We've done that. You do it again. <laughs>